Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the bend allowance for a piece of cardboard. This is very important because you're probably going to want to bend things a lot, and unfortunately, the cardboard dimensions change when you bend it. So I'm going to show you a foolproof way to figure out how to allow for that. To start off, you're going to need a piece of cardboard, a piece of paper, or something to mark on. You're going to need a square. Uh, if it has marks on one side to measure from, great. If not, you're going to need a ruler. What we're going to do is measure halfway up our cardboard, or roughly half, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to draw a perpendicular line. My piece here is five inches, so I'm going to go ahead and use two and a half. So we're going to go two and a half up. Then we're going to draw a perpendicular line across our cardboard. Like so. Now obviously, this is going to be the bend line. I'm going to go ahead and mark that we're two and a half from this edge. Since this line wasn't exactly in the middle, we want to make sure we know which edge we need to measure from. So we're two and a half from this edge to this line. That's great. Now we're going to go ahead and bend it. To bend it, you can do several ways. One way for a large piece that works really well is simply lay your straight edge up and press down hard with your pen as you draw a line, and that will score it enough to get you to be able to bend it. For a tiny piece like this, we can use this nice ruler as a break. We can put it right on our line and just press down, and that'll do it. Then when we actually go to bend it, go ahead and put your straight edge back next to the line, and then bend. Awesome. And that's how you bend it. But I guarantee you things moved. So. This is why we have our square with our ruler on one side. We want to measure from this edge, the original edge that we marked from. And the reason we need a square is because this needs to be perpendicular to this. Because if we measure it like this, well, our distance will be wrong. And if we over bend it, then the distance will be even more wrong. Yes, you can be more wrong. So, we'll set our square up into our little fold just like this, and we can see that it is no longer two and a half. It has shortened by three thirty seconds of an inch. Let me show you why we have to use the square. Let's say that I had it like this, and I went to measure flat on the surface here. Well, the edge of my square gets caught down in this little fold, and my distance is wrong. If I measure like this, this says two and, oh gosh, 15, 30 seconds, just under half an inch, two and a half inches. If I were to overbend it and I didn't have it, I could stick it in there and it would be way wrong. It would give me the same reading, but when I go to use this, my goodness, look how short that is now. Now it's only two and an eighth. So this is why we use this to calculate our bend allowance. And it's short by 3 30 seconds. What about the outside dimension? How did that change? Well, to find that, it's not too hard. We're going to use a pen on our paper here to mark an edge. That's our reference edge. We're going to fold this back, get our trusty square, and set it and scoot it so that the back edge and this are perpendicular. Now, we hold this in place, we can remove this. We take our pen in our non-dominant hand, which is not convenient, and make a mark where that is. Now, we take this, line it up with our line we made a second ago to make sure that we're measuring the perpendicular distance and not some other diagonal distance, because that would be farther than what it really is. This distance is Two and two and a half and three thirty seconds. Well, how about that? Obviously, we know that we need to add for this piece of cardboard that I buy, which is normally five thirty seconds of an inch thick. We need to add three thirty seconds to our dimension in order to get them to come out just right. This, of course, that I showed you was for an inside bend. We hardly ever do that because it's really hard to measure from, and the the mark that you just made, which was so lovely and straight, is now lost in this fold. So when we can, we like to make our marks on the outside so that we don't lose them, and then it's really easy to measure from. 
So let's go ahead and try now and offset by 330 seconds and to see if our inside dimension comes out right. I can go ahead and use this same piece. It won't be too tough. So I'm going to go ahead and mark over. Let's say we want to shoot for, oh gosh, three, we can go three and a half. One inch over shouldn't be a problem. So we'll make a mark there at three and a half, flip our square around. We'll draw a perpendicular. We'll use our metal thing. You're probably going to want to do this a few times for different samples, just to make sure that you get a, you know, statistically relevant result. And we'll bend. And sure enough, now we're at exactly three and a half with our 330 seconds allowance. Not that difficult. As you can see, um, I did a calibration case and then one where I intentionally offset by that amount and then got exactly the dimension that I wanted from the edge to the wall. That's all you got to do to find your bend allowance. Now I did this of course across the grain. If you're going to do it with the grain, that's a whole other video and you don't ever want to bend with the grain if you don't have to. But I'll show you that one in another one. I hope this helps explain things a little bit, but thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.